Good morning and welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church. We're so glad that we can at least virtually be together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we gather to worship this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Coming into God's presence, we're reminded that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our proclamation here at Our Saviors is that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So that's our hope. I invite you to just take a moment in your heart to reflect on ways that you may have fallen short in your relationship with God and others this week. Tell God you're sorry, and then we'll get to hear again his word of grace and forgiveness. It's such a privilege to be able to tell you and remind you, God loves you. When you say you're sorry and want to change, he forgives your sins and he makes you clean as though it's never happened, cleanses you from all unrighteousness is what the word of God said. So with that proclamation of grace, receive the peace of the Lord. If you're worshiping and watching this with other people today, share that peace with them or just let that peace sink into your own heart for a moment this morning as we begin our worship. Our gospel reading for this morning is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he scattered his seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop 160, 30 times what was sown. 
Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to the parable of, of what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This is the gospel of our Lord. Amen. Grace to and peace this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, often when this parable comes through the lectionary, I find myself focusing on one of the three things, the sower, the seed, or the soil. And I'm thinking today, since we have this ability to team preach on this, I thought maybe we could talk about all three of, of these elements because they all seem to play a really important role in Jesus' story. So should we talk about the seed? What do you think about the seed as Jesus tells this parable? Well, it's interesting is when Jesus talks about this parable, it's repeated and also in the Gospel of Luke. In Matthew, what I read for you, it says the, the seed is the word of the kingdom of heaven. And in Luke, when the story is told, Jesus says the seed is the word of God. I think it's kind of a different way of, of saying the same thing, but that working of the word of God that, goes, that takes place in our heart and in our life. You know, I love the fact that that seed is available to everyone. You know, it scatters it freely to, on all types of soil. And the way that that seed works in our life is to come in, I think of um, the way the Lutheran understanding of the way the Word of God works. It comes with the law that reminds us of what is wrong and points us to what is right. And the way it challenges our sin and leads us to that place where we acknowledge Father, I've sinned, forgive me. And then the gospel of God comes in, this wonderful news that for Jesus' sake, we are loved, we are forgiven, and we are given a chance to be born anew. I love the way that that's the, the kind of a holistic way of the word of God working in our lives, and it's available to everyone without restriction. I think about the seed, you know, you mentioned the different versions. Sometimes people will come up to me and ask me what translation of the Bible is best or, or what translation should I use for a specific study. You know, the, the word of God as that seed, we give Bibles to babies before they can ever read so that their parents could show them the pictures of the stories and, and help that word to grow within them. We think about all of the translations that are available to us. Every person, I think, has a favorite translation that really speaks to them. And the beautiful thing is, regardless of the translation, regardless of how educated you are or how early you are in faith development, whether it's age or just newness to the church, the seed of God is planted in you. That word of God comes to you abundantly and without restriction. And so when Jesus talks about this parable and the spreading of the seed, I I imagine that when I look at our congregation and I think of how we just so freely want to teach the Word of God to everyone, regardless if we all come away with the same understanding or regardless if we're struggling with a certain phrase or a certain passage, we're just, we're giving that Word freely as God gives it to us. So if we talk about the seed, then what about the sower? What do you think when it comes to the sower? Pastor Jody and I, when we were talking about this message and this text, we both have lived in, in agricultural areas. And there's kind of a joke that any farmer that reads this text is going to think, 
that sower is crazy. You know, you protect your seeds, you plant them so many inches deep and so many inches apart, and you, you take very good care because you don't want to waste. Seed is a very precious commodity. And there's a recklessness with the way this sower who is representing God goes out and scatters his word, scatters his seed, regardless of where it falls, regardless of whether it has a chance to produce fruit or not. And to me, it becomes such a symbol of God's grace and God's desire for all people to at least have the chance to hear about him, to hear his love, and to have that door of salvation open to them. I think about conversations I've had with farmers over the years, both in Wisconsin and even here. Sometimes farmers will self-describe themselves as just a dumb farmer. And really, there is no such thing. Farming is a very calculated endeavor. You have to be quite wise and astute to the ground and to pH levels and, and all of the ways that a seed is going to be in its most conducive form to be able to bear fruit. Each seed represents money in so many ways. It represents stability. And yet you're right, God is so reckless in, his, in this parable with how he throws the seed out. And it doesn't seem to matter to God if the seed falls on soil that's good and that's going to be uh, receptive to that seed or if it's gonna fall in other areas that aren't going to be conducive. God is just so reckless with this seed, this word for each of us. It really is, I think it's the grace part of this text that is really beautiful because it reminds us um, that, the, that the sower really knows what he's doing. The sower really is ready to give out everything that he can to make us who he wants us to be. And he doesn't hold anything back, which is pretty impressive. It actually, to me, is pretty endearing to know that, that that must be an appreciation for the soil in a way that I don't know if I would have that if I were that sower. So then we get to the soil. What do you think about the soil? Yeah, well, that's, that's us, isn't it? You know, it's talking about us as human beings and how we receive that word and work of God, you know, God's word and spirit working together. And, and I like to you to think about this in a couple different ways. First of all, that this is, where are you now? If you were to assess yourself, what type of soil do you see yourself? I think Jesus was telling this parable to the people at that time, hoping that they would come away asking themselves that question. Is my heart so hard that these teachings that are coming from Jesus yeah, I don't even understand it. I don't care enough to even want to bother and ask questions. I'm just going to in one ear, out the other. Is it that, yeah, we just, we get excited about it, but we don't really have any depth. And for somebody like me where, you know, the constant threat, there's some depth there, there's some root, but there's a lot of weeds growing up. And sometimes what Jesus said, the, the carries of the, the worries of this world and the deceitfulness of wealth, Sometimes it just seems to choke out the joy and the hope and even the love that God has put in my heart. And so I think he's asking us to look at ourselves in this and to really see what kind of soil we are. I would agree. I, I think that God wants us to prepare ourselves. I mean, there are certainly things that we can do to be more receptive to God's word. How we focus on God's word, how we create time in our day and in our life, uh, what our family situations and friendships look like that, that help to foster a faithfulness. I know I certainly have had relationships in my life that haven't been the healthiest and actually have been detrimental to my faith growth. And I've, I've in some ways had to weed my own garden from time to time and really think about what am I doing to help God's seed grow. I also think that there's a component where where God is still giving us the seed. Even, even if our soil isn't perfect, God still has faith in us. And there's, there's an aspect to that I think is really beautiful. God has faith in us so that we, in response, have faith in him. It's that relationship that God so desires with us. And that's what I think we often forget about in faith. It, it's not an all or nothing. It's not a one-way street. It is a relationship that God just 
constantly is seeking out for us, wanting to build his kingdom, and we are a part of that. And the, and the beauty of that work of God is that regardless of what we assess ourselves with in terms of whether we consider ourselves good soil or the beaten path or the choked out weeds, you know, we, sometimes we can be pretty hard on ourselves. And on the contrary, sometimes we can be pretty light on ourselves and we can assume that, oh, well, I'm the good soil. I mean, of course God's gonna be able to do good things in me. We might be wrong both ways. The beauty is that God has the power to change us. And all the scripture asks us to do is cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, God has said that he, you know, he has planted his spirit in our hearts, that he, his spirit dwells in us through faith in Jesus Christ. And when that is happening, and when we're cooperating, even if it's reluctant cooperation, God has the power to take a beaten path and break that hard, crusty soil that sometimes reflects our hearts. God has the power to pull the rocks out and to leave the good soil. And God's probably the best weeder uh, that I know of. That's one thing when you mention having previous experiences with soil and, and farming communities. I was amazed that every year when the tillers would go through the fields, when they were getting the fields ready to plant corn, how many rocks would get turned up? I mean, these were fields that were planted over and over again for generations. And yet when the tillers would go through, there would still be rocks. And sometimes I think we forget that in our own life. Sometimes I think, you know, we, we think, okay, we have faith and we have most of life figured out. And then there's something that happens and it causes us to stumble and we wonder where it came from. And the reality is sinful, broken human beings, as God's word continues to churn in us, as God's word continues to work in us, there are going to be rocks that turn up. There are going to be things that convict us and challenge us and, and just help us to see ourselves even in a new way. And that's the beauty of how God's work continues to really make us a new creation, as Paul reminds us. It reminds us that God's really never done with us. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy and mighty God, we gather in your name and we thank you for the grace that you shower upon us. As we reflect this morning on the work of the sower who scattered his seed recklessly, we thank you, Lord, for the way you spread your love on all people, regardless of how they receive it, Lord, it is offered to all of us. Thank you for that grace. We pray, Lord, as we hear and reflect on your word today, that you would work through your Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts and our lives to be better soil to receive your word, that it may grow in us and produce fruit for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that your love is perfect for each one of us. And before a word is on our tongue, you know it completely. So whatever prayers we bring to you, whatever needs, you not only know the need and you know the words, you know the right way. And your word says that your Holy Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. So we add to your Spirit's prayer the words and the names and concerns that we bring you today from our hearts. We pray for Eugene Wardwell, for Bobby McGrew, for Sharon Geyer's daughter Wendy, for Rachel Watillo, for Linda Murray, for Jerry Rislove, for Ron Arguin's mother, Vera, for Don and Nancy Miller's daughter, Sally, for Deb Brofflot's brother, Conrad, for Peggy Norris's husband, Royce, for Tony Chrissy, for Dennis Pofall, for Carl Hedin, for Sandy Axon, for Donna Miller, for Trina Arneson, for Bill Foote, for Kathy Glaze's brother-in-law, Terry. Father, in addition to those who we lift up who need physical healing and the comfort of your love and presence, we lift up to you those who are grieving. And it's with especially heavy hearts today that we lift up to you Jim and Connie Finley at the sudden death of their son, Andy. Comfort them, Lord, and grant them grace and peace, comfort and strength for the days of grieving ahead. We ask that all those who are grieving would be refreshed in the promise of everlasting life that you've given us through your son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father in heaven, we come before you. We again lift up to you our community, our state, our nation, our world, where the news filled is filled so much with trouble and hatred and violence and division, with fears of diseases and disasters, of wars and angry talk between nations. Father, we give you thanks that you are the God who knows the end from the beginning. In your hands, you hold all things. So comfort us to know that in your love and in your justice, you are with us at this time. And we pray that you would help us be your instruments to bring love and truth and justice and healing to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and praying together as your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. God bless you as you go out and live out your faith, as you walk in his grace, as you serve him in word and deed. Now hear the word of blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs>